And that's how it's done. Okay, so Boris just removed the first front shoulder for us and we're gonna get to work on it. There's really no critical pieces of meat here. It's, you know, we're not making steaks or anything out of a front shoulder. It's pretty much all gonna be burger meat. So all it means is we're deboning and, and defatting. There's actually a gland piece right in here that what we're gonna remove, we don't wanna cut into this gland. You can actually see right here, we don't wanna get that all over the meat. The, the glands are, are pretty nasty and you certainly don't wanna have it in there getting ground up with your meat. So you just wanna make all the nice big cuts first and get everything cleaned up. So I know I wanna remove this. I'm just gonna come right down and remove all this fat, the gland, the fat here. It didn't ruin any meat in the front shoulder, but just from the impact, we got a little bit of blood there. We'll just take that out. And there's some big pieces of fat that we'll cut off first before we start breaking it down. Nice sharp knife. Just get this gland off first. Always wanna watch your opposite hand. Don't wanna cut yourself. Just wanna get down in here and get this bloody stuff off. You don't have to get all the fat off, but you wanna get most of it off. I mean, some of it, it's, it's, it's okay to leave in there and get ground up, but you don't wanna have too much. You know, same goes with like the silver skin, any little sinew pieces. When we grind this meat, you add fat to it. You add trimmings, so pork trimmings will get added. You have to add some, some pork into the meat uh, for the fat content and some extra flavor. Boris has been experimenting with with some beef and actually adding, he's added brisket meat into the ground venison. Has an awesome flavor. The 90-10, 90% venison, 10% brisket fat. It tastes good. But the venison just needs that little extra. Because we're taking so much fat out of it, you gotta add some, some good taste and fat for the flavor and the moisture. The venison fat, it doesn't really have a good flavor. It can cause meat to go rancid. Some of it has a really weird mouthfeel. It leaves like a, a gross coating in your mouth. And it, for the most part, you just want to get the fat off the meat. We're really just removing the meat from the bone to put into our burger pile. We'll start down here low, kind of come down. You see all these tendons here and you just come up right along the one side. And then again, on the other side of the bone, down and back up the other side. Cut it off right there, cut it around it. You don't want to dig the knife into the bone too much and dull your blade. Try to avoid it if you can. Just taking the meat off the bone here, right in here. But first we'll just get around everything here. You coming over to show something? See you're almost exposed right there. Just kind of with your point of your knife nick through there. Flip it over right now and see if you can pull that right back up like this. Okay. And then you have that one tendon right there you cut. Here's, you want me to show you what I do? Yeah. I'll get it like this. Take this off. You go like this. Down this bone on either side. This is the shoulder blade. And there's another connection right there. And you take it like this. I just wanted to show you. Sometimes you can get this and pull this bone right out. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. Like that. Sometimes this comes out and stays on the other piece of meat, not cut it off. There's one tendon I like to get out of here though. You leave it connected to the bone. It's right in this triangular piece right here that was on the shoulder blade. And you go right down through here. That's a nice piece of meat. And do the same on this side. Leave that tendon right on, the bone. Pretty much all the other tendons, you know, everything tastes delicious on it. You know, you don't have to mess with it. You don't have to worry about all these other little tendons. Yeah, I mean, they just, especially when they're getting ground. Yep. They're getting ground up and then they just melt right it's down. All flavor. Meat. Just, we're, we're almost done here, the front shoulder, really. One bone left in here. We're just gonna clean out a little bit of this fat in here. Just take this bone out. Just cutting right along the bone here. Let's cut the meat around it. This is called the dog bone. And everything that's left is just meat. Still got some cleaning up to do. Where you have you know, some silver skin. I mean, this is really not bad at all. You can almost just peel most of it off, but a good way to get that off, you flip it over and you just go down right through the bottom of it and then just run your knife along it comes right off. I love having steaks and everything, but I like having ground meat too. Boris makes the, his Cajun pepperoni, delicious. 
I like having sausage. And I like having burger meat. Venison is so good for those, for, for meatloaf or Salisbury steak. It's, it's so lean. It's not greasy, at least the way I make it. This is a good example here where you see the separate pieces of muscle where, where this piece meets here and it's got a bunch of silver skin here. So we don't want to cut in here. We want to cut, separate these two, leave that all on the one side, come down, and then I'll just clean this off when I'm doing this piece here. See this fat right here. I'm just going to take this out before I go any further. I like to try to keep the work area clean, you know, little pieces like this. I'm just trying to get out of the way. And remember, wash your hands first. If you recall, in a previous episode, I kept saying clean your hands, and we had a really hard time not laughing. After we watched the footage, I don't know why I kept saying clean your hands, clean your hands. I mean, just wash your hands. We say wash. We don't say clean your hands. Say wash your hands. And hopefully, you'll clean yours like I just did. <laughs> I felt like this. And hopefully, you'll clean them like I just did. <laughs> and now it's time. <laughs> And why can't he just say it without laughing? Why can't he be like a normal person and just say, wash your hands before you start cooking? It's obvious. Ah, we're getting better, you know. Here's another part right here where you have a silver skin that goes right down under the meat. So we'll just try to keep the knife on top of it. Let's get the meat off of it and leave that big piece of silver skin. We can do the flipperoo on this one. And then just run the knife along the very bottom. A lot like flaying a fish, really. But just to make the stew, you got a nice piece of meat right here. You know, just imagine what you would think chunks of uh, stew meat would look like. Like one inch cubes. I mean, look how nice that meat looks right there. So between this front shoulder and then the second one when we do it, we'll have a nice package of stew meat there. The very last piece of the, of the shoulder here, there's a lot of silver skin on this. And you can just pretty much do the technique I was just showing you where you basically fillet it right off and just flip it over for not a ton of meat, but a few more of those, it adds up. So now we're getting into why a lot of people hunt deer for the back straps, back straps, loins, whatever you want to call them. What I do is there, there's a hip bone right there. I'm just going to feel around and get right at the bottom of that hip bone. Hip bone's connected to the leg bone. I'm gonna come up that way. And then I'm gonna go right down the center. You can kind of see this line. I'm gonna go right down on the, it's either side of that. Try to follow that line. Right on the side of the vertebrae. Follow it right down. I can do the other side while I'm here. These bones come around to a shelf that this meat is sitting on right here. So I'm going to pull this away from these little bones right here, get a little line started. And it's going to pretty much go down like this. You want to be kind of careful here. It's a nice piece of meat, so you don't want to leave too much on the bone. Change this to flat right in here, so you want to go flat. Pulling this edge up, kind of pulling it away so I can see where I'm going. Careful. Got some neck meat in there that will go in the trimming pile or snow meat. Now it's only almost ready to fall right out. I'm gonna come back here, make this cut here. Boom. I'll clean it up a little bit, then Brad will finish it, but just pull this fat off. There's your back strap. Oh yeah. That's a lot of reason why people hunt deer right there. It's beautiful just like that, but wait until it's all done. Yep. We got a little bit more work to do. So the fat's all removed, but we still have a big piece of silver skin on the one side and a little bit of extra meat that we're gonna take off on this side here. So just a little bit of meat that we're gonna remove. And we're gonna take our fingers and just find where the meat comes apart here. And pretty much just pull it right off. And we just have a little bit of cleaning up to do here. Some fat. I'm gonna take my time and clean all this up because this is 
got some of the best meat, if not the best meat on the entire deer. This is like your primo steaks from anywhere on the deer. And you could trim it all up, leave it whole, and then just cut sections off so you have pretty thick steaks, so almost, you know, almost a two inch steak, or you could butterfly and make thinner steaks. I like leaving it whole and then just, you know, cutting maybe every four inches or so, so you have some big thick steaks. There's this piece of meat here at the end, and you can see the line. The end here is getting down close to the neck. It's a little bit thinner. You can take it off or leave it on. It depends on the size of the back strap. I'm gonna leave it on. Tip of the, the knife and just get this started a little bit. Right here, all the way to the end. What we're gonna do here is take off all the silver skin on this side. And we'll try to do it in one cut. So, filet method, starting down at this end. Just gonna go a little bit into the meat in the very, very end, down to the bottom, turn the knife till you feel that skin, and we're just gonna run it right down the board. And if I do it right, we're gonna have a beautiful piece of meat on one side, and a bunch of silver skin left on the table here. See that? All that silver skin just comes right off. How awesome is that? And this is that piece I was talking about before where you could take it off if you want. And you can see there's a little bit of, there's a little line of silver skin right, right there. And that's why, it's a main reason why you would take it off just so you could get that off. You know, this deer, it's a little small, it might be, you know, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it on between the main piece of backstrap here to the loin and this piece. We got the legs off, we got the back straps out, tenderloins were previously cut out. We trimmed up, we got the neck cut off. We're down to the ribs. I'm gonna cut the ribs off. I can trim a little meat off the ribs. So, with a meat saw. I can say be careful that you don't go too far because if you slip and you hit that, sh they're sharp. They'll cut your knuckles. It's been done before. Gonna do the same to the other side. Now this is pretty much all scrap. I'm just gonna cut this up to put in the garbage. That's that. Now we're gonna break down the hind quarters, split them in half. I'm just gonna open this up a little bit right here. I like to cut out a little strip on either side here so my saw can fit through there without getting stuck to cut down the middle of the, the hip bone area here. And swinging meat. I was in a local store here and they had domestic venison. For this piece of meat, probably a little smaller than this, it was $125 for that piece. So it kind of hurts me when somebody says, yeah, make sausage out of that or something. This is not sausage meat. This is some really nice meat for either roasts, steaks, the chicken speck that I made up there. This is a really quality piece of meat. Okay, we're gonna break down the hind quarter. I learned doing it on the table, so I'm gonna do it on the table. So let me take this down here. First thing I'm gonna do is take this hip bone out. I'm gonna follow that line. You gotta be careful here. You go, don't go too deep and don't go too hard. You don't wanna slip and cut yourself. You follow around the hip bone. Unlike the front shoulder, there is a knuckle here. There's a, a ball joint kind of thing that where the, where the leg connects into the hip. And you just wanna cut, loosen that up a little bit on the edge. There's a little tendon that connects that leg to the hip, you wanna cut that tendon, you get it in there, and then it's gonna fall right apart. Following along the edge of the bone a little at a time. Follow it back this way, a little bit, not too much. Then there's this other little, little hook where a tendon meets to this bone, it sticks out a little bit, you just gotta come around that and cut that off and come back in. Take your time, and there you have it. You can trim up a little bit if you want. I didn't really leave too much meat on there, but something for the trim pile later. I think I did good. Next thing I'm gonna do, if you wanna do a shank, cut this tendon off here. Something you wanna do before you go too far, just clean up some of this 
fat and silver skin that you can see. You're gonna cut this off right about here. That's garbage. And then right in the middle of this knee joint here, right in the middle, you're just gonna cut there, cut around the bone, cut right down. Shank you. <laughs> There's your shank. There's a vein that runs down right below this little piece of meat right here. It's just a thin little layer of meat, this little tiny piece. You just cut your knife right underneath here. Gonna pull that out, leaving the vein on the meat. I'm, I don't want to cut. I don't want to cut down the middle of the vein. And there I have it. I'm gonna cut this vein out. Get that out of the way. Now, you got the bone that goes right down through here. Just run your knife right down on that edge. And start pulling the meat away so you see the bone. Go around this. There's a lot of cartilage right here, so you don't have to worry about being too close. Cut that off there. I'm going to do the same to this side over here. And then I'm going to pull this out and just go right down there. Cut that bone right out. So now we're left with the boneless hind quarter, and there's basically really three nice pieces of meat here. This first one is, uh, we call it, everybody calls it the football, because you'll see when it get pulled out, it looks like the football. So that's just a matter of pulling this away like this. Cut it when it's tight, but a lot of it will just pull right out. I like to make cutlets out of this piece. Kind of thin, thinly cut steaks. I'm not cutting through any meat. You see right here, I'm not cutting through meat. There's, you know, there's where I had to cut through the meat, cut off the bone, so you see what that looks like. But right here, I'm not cutting through the meat. I'm just cutting the piece of meat out. I'm separating the muscles. So there's one. And then what you have here is your top round, bottom round, and eye round. I like to tie a roast out of these sometimes, so I leave them kind of connected. But if you're not tying a roast, you can separate them. If you are tying a roast, there's this piece of fat that you want to cut out. This, this fat, there's a gland inside that that you don't want to have tied up into your roast. So cut that out. But that's the piece of fat right there that you want to make sure you get out of your roast. Because in here, there's some kind of nasty gland in there. If you see that, it's kind of got a little odor to it. If you're going to make a roast, you trim this up a little bit more, but you leave it connected. That's your top round, eye round, and bottom round. But you would tie that out, and you tie that into like that. You make a nice roast, and then you trim it up nice, beautiful roast. I call it a round roast because it's got the top round, eye round, and bottom round in it. So it was a little bit smaller deer, but you cook that just like a roast in the oven, and you cook it medium rare. You don't want to overcook venison. We're making steaks and stuff here, right? So... I just cut right down between the piece of meat. That's one piece. Just follow right down in between. And use your fingers to help separate it. And this one here, you're gonna roll it off the fat. Your eye round, and then you have your bottom round. We like to make a nice London broil, as you'll see in a minute how this looks like a London broil. I'm gonna trim right down this fat edge here. Thick fat right here. Run the knife right along the edge. And I'm gonna just fillet it. Sharp knife is important. And when you're doing a few deer, you'll dull them up, so you get them sharpened, keep a couple knives handy. Wasn't too bad. Just like filleting a fish, I got most of it off. It makes a good London broil. So we're gonna trim it up a little bit here. Trim a little over there. There's another piece you want to cut off. This is a pretty tough tendon right there. You can see that silver skin. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of run my knife down as close as I can. Just cut it right off and I'll, I'll scrape off any meat I left on there.
for the trimming file. Left the little on there, no problem. I'll save it for the trims. But that's a pretty nice piece of meat right there. If you're going to make steaks out of it, you can make steaks. You cut that tip off, but then you're going to cut across the grain like this. On the top round, there's always this piece of meat on the top. You just kind of go between the layers, peel it up. Clean this off here. Again, I'm just trying to go between the pieces of meat. You know, you can put these in the freezer just like this. And if you want to have a, a roast or something, a big fat steak like that, you can have it. But if you want to have little steaks, you can cut it after you thaw it out. It's going to freeze better whole. So that's that. This piece I came off, I'm just going to trim it up a little bit. A little fat that's going to go in the trim pile. Any big pieces out of this, you could cut up into stew. I one time, I used to say, oh, the venison tastes as good as the beef, you know, so we did a round roast. I did it on the rotisserie, and I bought a nice beef eye round. So they're about the same size. So one piece of meat on the beef and the eye round. And cooked them on the rotisserie together, and we sliced them up and tried the, tried the venison. It was delicious. And then tried the eye round, and it was like no flavor compared. When you, hit, when you take care of the venison properly from the field to the refrigerator to the freezer, when you take care of it properly, there is no gamey flavor. It's delicious. If there's a gamey flavor, there's a reason for it. I used to always just cut this up into stew, but we found out it's a very good, tasty piece of meat. This is the rump roast, or the rump. All the premium pieces right here. So you got your top round, your bottom round, makes a great London broil. Eye round, sirloin, or football, the shank, and the rump, rump steak. Ready to go, we'll slice them up into some steaks. I think we're gonna even have a, a rump today. Be delicious. Okay, we got all of our meat cleaned up, ready to go, and we're gonna start making some steaks and some cutlets. I'm gonna start with our loin, the back strap. I can get four or five steaks out of each one of them, depending on how, you know, how long we make them. So, I like to just eye it up first. Right, I'm not actually cutting, I have the back of the knife on the meat here, just make a little indent. It's one, two, trying to make them even. Three, four, and five gets pretty small with a little tip. So I'm gonna go for five. So I made my lines here, I'm gonna go in a little bit off that line and do one. And I can put it right here for my two. three, four, and five. Pretty thin there, I'm just gonna snap that off, and toss it in my stew pile, put them to the side, move on to the bottom round. We're gonna make steaks. This is one of the pieces that we could make chicken spec out of. I'm gonna switch knives. Nice big chef's knife. I'm gonna cut across the grain on the bias to make some steaks. Okay, we got a little bit left at the end that we're gonna to add to our stew pile. It's important throughout the process to keep your work area clean, keep your knives clean, keep them sharp, you know, wipe it down, especially after you're breaking everything down and there might be a little bit of blood on the counter. I like keeping the eye rounds whole Two eye rounds, one from each hind quarter. And I cook them just like this, like a steak. You could butterfly and open it up and flatten it out. You could cut it into stew meat. I like them just like this. And if I change my mind, it's fine. I can, I can take one out of the freezer and thaw it out and then cut it up into stew if I want. But for now, I just keep them just like that. So we'll move on to a top round. This one we're keeping for steaks. Again, Across the grain, just work down. Switch over to my bigger knife. About the same thickness that we cut the bottom round. About a half inch or so. 
a little thicker. Half inch, three quarters of an inch. Move on to the football, the sirloin. Just gonna do some quick final trimming on it. Get a little of this, the last bit of silver skin off right here at the end. And then we'll just open it up a little bit. For this piece, we call them cutlets. These are gonna be closer to a quarter inch. Nice thin pieces of meat. It can be a little thicker than a quarter inch. You can get closer to a half inch, basically. A piece to, to make some sort of venison parmesan out of, or just a really quick pan fry steak. Shanks ready to go. These are the rump steaks, one from each side of the hind quarter. We're gonna cook these up right now, so I'm not even gonna bother with that. And all we have left is, an, is the other side of everything else, and that's it. We're done. We're just gonna start packaging these up. We have an awesome vacuum packer. We like to seal everything up and really get, a, get the longest life out of meat in the freezer ever with one of these vacuum packers. These would be good for a year, year plus, especially in, in the, when you vacuum pack them. You know, we, our venison never lasts that long. We eat it way before that. We turn that deer into a delicious display of meat that we're gonna enjoy all year long. All we have to do now is vacuum pack it and get it in the freezer. Loins, bottom round, top round, sirloin, rump steaks, shanks, eye round, stew meat, and eventually what's gonna become our burger meat that we're gonna make sausage and Cajun pepperoni and venison breakfast sausage and a whole bunch of other things. This deer was shot for the meat. Right? Yeah, it would have been great to have some antlers, but I'll make my memories from the meals that we cook out of this meat and thinking about how I learned how to make this and how he taught me how to do this and how to cook and how mom taught us the meals that we make out of this. And it just makes me think about who I learned it from, from a young age. You know, I, I don't even remember how old it was the first time I was doing deer with well, you. Well, I, I brought this along to show you. How old are you there? You're about 10 years old in that picture. One of my nice bucks I shot back in the day. And uh, that was a long time ago. So we've been doing this for quite a while. We got better at it. It takes time to get better at it, but I'm proud of you. You did a nice job and uh, we're gonna really enjoy that. Right now, we're gonna enjoy these rump steaks. We got the wood stove and the cast iron fired up. We're about to hit these things right in there. Thanks for watching. If you like this, subscribe and stay tuned for a whole lot more. We call it, everybody calls it the football because you'll see when it get pulled out, it looks like the football. All right. Football. I got to get this right out of the way. I just cut past it, but you'll see a little V-shaped here. You go to the bottom, it was like that. If you know what that's called, comment. Let us know what the V is called. Yes. <laughs> V-neck. <laughs> V-neck. That goes in the garbage can. The only thing that the, the hoes are good for is if you want to mess with your friends and make deer tracks all around their property. <laughs> and then you just give it a snap. If you get it right, it snaps. If you have a saw, <laughs> just as easy to saw, of course, right now. Hopefully we'll get better on the next one. <laughs> Normally it goes very simple. Ooh. Don't worry, that part could be edited out. Start over on this one. Yep. <laughs> I'll come over here. But this is gonna, when I cut, this is gonna swing in that way. And I'm gonna say, swing in meat. Because I always have. And, swing in meat. How about if I clean up this scongeli a little bit? Just to be clear, scongeli is a snail. Scongeli is a snail? Yeah. Huh. They must, be, they must be slimy. It looks slimy. <laughs> slimy little bastards.